The first video I've made in at least a week. I've been so busy in the field, I haven't had a chance to really do much schoolwork. All right. I'm not going to do one and two. Well, you need to figure that out. Let's look at maybe four. Well, what I have to remember is I have to remember some little things here. And to be honest, for this page, about the only thing you really have to know is that I squared is negative one. That's it. So 4i times 2i would be an 8i squared. 4i times a negative 12 is negative 48i. Now, since i squared is negative 1, this becomes 8 times a negative 1, then minus 48i. This becomes negative 8 minus 48i. And if you look up top the form they want, the form is they want the real plus the imaginary. So the i always comes second. All right, number six, we've got something called the double distributive property. Three times seven is 21. Three times a negative two i minus six i. Negative two i times seven minus 14 i. And then negative two i times negative two i is plus four i squared. And once again, i squared is negative one. So I'm gonna make this a negative four. Because I could just, you know, make that a negative one. So if I focus on like terms, I have 21 and a negative 4, which is going to be 17. And I have a negative 6i and a negative 14i, which is minus 20i. Okay, there's your two answers there. They're not hard. They're really not. Let's see here. Let's look at 9. To clear out 9, there's a couple of ways you can do this. The easiest way is actually to multiply by negative i. There's several ways of doing this one. Like you would do the same on number 8. This is actually the easiest way to do it. Let's see, we have negative i times 5, which is negative 5i. And then we have a negative 2i times a negative i, which is plus 2i squared. Down low, we have a negative 6i squared. Now, once again, please remember that i squared is negative 1. It's not that hard. If this is 2i squared, then it's 2 times a negative 1, which is negative 2. And your form talks about a plus bi. It has to be first. So negative 2 minus 5i. Both pieces are sitting over 6. And we're going to break it apart. Because we want this not as a singular fraction, but in this form, a plus bi. Negative 2 over 6 is negative 1 over 3. And negative 5 over 6 is minus 5, 6, i. Now, of course, you are supposed to learn how to do this by hand. Here's an old, or old T84 that doesn't work. Let me grab a different one. Maybe I have one down here somewhere. Okay, I'll just get up off my butt and I'll get a calculator. Ah, here we go. Every TI 84 faceplate can do imaginary numbers. You want to check your work? And that's what this is for check your work. Because if I don't see some intermediate stuff, it don't count. But you can check. Not do. In a TI 84. Let's see, I'm going to hit math, I'm going to hit num, I'm going to scroll to n over d, and the original expression was 5 minus 2i. The i key is right there. It's that decimal point. And it was over 6i. If you're watching at home and you still don't have a TI-84, shame on you. The librarian will loan you one. You need to learn how to use it. All right, underneath this one is 11. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of 3 plus 2i. And its conjugate would have to be 3 minus 2i. 
Just change the sign on the imaginary piece. Now you have a conjugate. And then we're going to do the double distributive property. In the bottom, the bottom always works out well. 3 times 3 is 9. Then you'll have a plus 6i. Then you'll have a minus 6i. Those always cancel out. And then you're going to have minus 4i squared. The numerator, again, double distributive property. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times negative 2i minus 4i. Negative 5i times 3 minus 15i. And then plus 10i squared. And once again, i squared is negative 1. So everywhere you see an i squared, you change the sign and you throw it away. Like this plus 10i squared, that's minus 10. This minus 4i squared, that's plus 4. Let's look at like terms here. We have a 6 and a negative 10. That is a negative 4. Looks like minus 19i. Down low, 9 and 4 makes 13. And then we break it apart because, again, we want this form, two separate things, two separate terms. We have a negative 4 over 13 minus a 19i over 13. And again, you can check in a TI-84. Math, num, n over d, 2 minus 5i up top, 3 plus 2i down low. Looks the same, don't it? <clears throat> All right, 13 is adding fractions. Uh, to add fractions, common denominator. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to 2 this piece, which means I have to 2 the top. Why am I 2-ing the bottom? Because I want the bottoms to both be 6s. Now they're both over 6. I can add the tops. 5 and 3 makes... 13, 4i plus a negative 3i is plus an i, both pieces over 6, it's 13, 6 plus i over 6, assuming I didn't screw up, not doing 13, see on these we're supposed to use square roots to solve the given equations, and I'm saying please write on fractions on 15, negative 1, Hundredth is literally negative one hundredth. And the opposite of squaring is square rooting. And uh, x is going to be plus or minus the square root of negative one over the square root of a hundred. That's how you work with fractions and square roots. Now I know the definition of i is the square root of negative one. So I'm just going to use substitution property. x equals plus or minus i. And I also know the square root of 100 is 10. I over 10. Done. Factor the sum of two squares over the complex number system. This is actually really, really easy. Uh, you know, we talk about, let's just pick on a number like 36. 36 is 1 times 36. It's 2 times 18. It's 4 times 9. It's 3 times 12. And it's 6 times 6. It is also the conjugate pair 6i times negative 6i. That's its imaginary set of factors. So think about that. Do 18, which is probably the hardest one. That's actually not that bad. I'm going to factor it. I'm going to pull a quarter from both pieces. I know you're like Milbrath. Where would that 100 come from? Well, you take 25. When you pull it, when I say the word pull, I mean divide it out. You divide it by 1 over 4. By God, it's 100. All right? I did that because your factors of 100, you know, they're 1 times 10, 2 times 50, dot, dot, et cetera. It's also 10i and negative 10i. So one quarter of b, I'm going to make that an uppercase so it's legible, minus 10i times b plus 10i. I'm not going to do all the 17 for you, but if I was doing 17, 
I'd probably pull out a two. Because now all I got to do is figure out factors of four, so forth. If I was doing 16, I'd do 2x and 2x. Just saying. All right, what do we got here? We got some solving. All right, let's look at 20. I'm going to solve it by factoring. Because you don't know the quadratic formula yet. This is going to be a 5x and a 5x. And the factors of a positive 9 are 3i and negative 3i. So plus 3i minus 3i. And it's equal to 0. So I could use this zero product property. So I take each factor. I set it equal to 0. I do this simple stuff, which I know a large number of you are really struggling with. Like, how do you get to be a junior and you can't even move a term from left to right without screwing it up? You need to go hug every teacher you've had for socially promoting your rear end. You do. Because you shouldn't be in my room. You shouldn't be. Plain and simple. So while I was ranting, I finished the problem. That's how hard this stuff is. You can rant and do at the same time. And uh, that is all I am going to do. 23 is for all those kids who are like, well, where am I ever going to use this stuff? You can't have electricity, electric circuits, the technology you use. Well, you, let me say this. It's a lot easier on the people creating things if they do the math with imaginary numbers. The fact that you're watching this video right now, created with technology, goes back to imaginary numbers. They still use it when they do circuitry boards. It's still used. It's always been used. It's been ever since we had electricity. That is for those of you who say, where am I going to use this? Where is this used? Right there. All day long.